The state of Florida has already elected incumbent President Joe Biden as the Democratic Party nominee. Even before a single resident in the state of Florida has casted a single ballot. Now, why is this the case? Well, it turns out that the state's Democratic Party has basically decided to make the most undemocratic move by refusing to hold a primary. They have canceled their Democratic primary election. So Biden will literally be the only Democrat on the ballot when the primary election takes place in Florida. So here's how it all went down. It's important to know that every state has its own rules in regard to how candidates make it onto a ballot. Like some states, for instance, will require petitions. Now in the state of Florida, the requirements are actually not that strict at all. In fact, one member of the Florida Democratic Party said the following, let's go to graphic three here. There's no requirement for presidential candidates to do anything to get on the ballot. Interesting information for you to know about as I continue to tell you the disgusting moves that were made by Florida's Democratic Party. Here's what they did. So in Florida, the deadline this year for parties to submit a list of approved candidates to state election officials was November 30th. Okay, that was the deadline, November 30th. Now here's what happened. According to the Florida Democratic Party communications director, the process to be on the Florida ballot has been publicly available on our website. It clearly states that the Florida Democratic Party's primary ballot is submitted to the Secretary of State by November 30th of 2023. This is the standard process. The state executive committee meets to vote to place candidates on the presidential primary ballot at the Florida Democratic Party's state convention every four years. So basically, you, if you're thinking about running, you're a Democrat, you submit your name as a candidate, and then the state Democratic Party holds some sort of convention in which the members will vote on those candidates and decide on you know who's gonna make it onto the, that ballot. They have that convention every four years. Well, guess what? Here's the update. The three candidates were contacted by Florida Democratic Party officials on Wednesday, November 29th, so one day prior to that deadline. For the party to send the names of the candidates who would appear on the ballot. And were informed that the party's state executive committee had already met at the state convention on October 29th and submitted the approved candidate list to the Secretary of State on November 1st. So, deadline is November 30th, but unbeknownst to anyone, okay? other than the members of the Florida Democratic Party, they had already held their convention on October 29th. And they're like, listen, we've already voted and Biden got all the votes. Now keep in mind, Dean Phillips didn't even announce that he was running for president until October 27th. So two days later, Florida decides to hold this convention, the state Democratic Party in Florida holds this convention and they do their vote and oh wow, wow. Everyone voted for Biden, so Biden, they're canceling their primary. Biden will be the only Democrat on the ballot during the primary election in Florida, okay? Now, in other words, a month prior to that deadline, the Florida Democratic Party unilaterally made the decision to cancel their state's primary. That is what happened. Now, the fact that the decision was made way before that deadline, that that the convention happened way before that deadline and that candidates weren't even informed until one day prior to the deadline, honestly indicates to me that they didn't even want the candidates to have enough time to object or even fight back against what they did here. Okay, so let me just pause for a second. This is unbelievably authoritarian and undemocratic. Canceling the primary election in the state of Florida is a big deal. Florida has 250 delegates, 250. And they have denied the other candidates, that includes Dean Phillips, Marianne Williamson, Jane Kuger, they have denied them the opportunity to appear on that ballot and they withheld, intentionally withheld information from these candidates in order to prevent them from doing anything about the undemocratic moves that the Florida Democratic Party was engaging in.
Okay, so keep in mind again that Dean Phillips launches his campaign on October 27th. And this decision by the Florida State Democratic Party was made two days after. According to Florida law, if there is one presidential candidate, neither the name of the candidate nor the names of delegates shall be printed on the ballot. And in this case, the election will be canceled. Now, so the question is, why were the other candidates excluded? Well, the Florida Democratic Party communications director said in a statement on Friday that all three candidates did not receive any votes at the October committee meeting. You know, the committee meeting that no one knew about, the committee meeting that they held and didn't let any of the other candidates know about. Yeah, that that one. Now, Florida has more than 4.4 million registered Democrats, and those Democrats will not have a chance to voice their opinion or weigh in on the Democratic primary at all. Because their state Democratic Party has basically made the decision for them. Now, mind you, this is the same Democratic Party that is running on this notion that if Joe Biden doesn't get elected, democracy's on the line, everyone. Democracy's on the line. What are we gonna do? Donald Trump is a threat to our democratic process. But behind the scenes, you have the Democratic Party ensuring that there is no robust democratic primary. And mind you, they're doing that at a time when about 70% of Democratic voters are begging for anyone other than Biden, anyone other than Biden. Democratic voters aren't happy with Biden. Democratic voters signed on to the Biden campaign in 2020 because they felt that he was at that time the best candidate to beat Donald Trump. And remember, Joe Biden had promised Democratic voters that he was only gonna run for that one term and then he was gonna step aside. Oops, he lied, he absolutely lied about it. And look, if you look at the polling, it is abundantly clear that the other Democratic candidates are still behind considerably, okay? Biden has a giant lead over them, which to me makes it even more egregious and gratuitous that the Florida Democratic Party did what they did here. It's just, what are you guys afraid of? If Biden has this massive lead, why would you need to make this unbelievable, undemocratic maneuver to prevent the other candidates from appearing on the primary ballot? Now, according to Cenk Uger, the Florida Democratic Party purposefully withheld valuable information from them to ensure that they wouldn't make it on the ballot. So let's hear what he has to say. And a little later, we'll hear from Marianne Williamson as well. All three of us are perfectly aware of the rules in every other state. And we have asked repeatedly the state of Florida through our campaigns what the rules are here so that we could abide by them. They never returned our calls or our emails to any of the campaigns. And then the day before the deadline, they say, "Oh, by the way, we made this decision. Not only did we make this decision, we made it a month ago, but we never let any of you guys know. We made it a month ago and we didn't let any of the other candidates know. That is exactly what happened here. And again, it is egregious, it's undemocratic, and it shows that the Democratic Party really has no leg to stand on as they fearmonger about the threat that the Republican Party poses to our democratic process. Because right here, we have a clear example of the Democratic Party engaging in something that is incredibly undemocratic. And again, let's take a look at the polling. If you look at the polling, you'll notice that the other candidates aren't, you know, they don't have a lead over Biden, they're not even close. Okay, so Biden's at 77%, Williamson's at 8%, Dean Phillips is at 6%, and Cenk Uger is at 2%. So why engage in this maneuver? Knowing that Biden has a lead, knowing that you are risking the negative headlines and the negative coverage that they're getting right now as we speak. It's just, again, yet another example of mainstream Democrats engaging in undemocratic behavior while simultaneously fear mongering about the undemocratic behavior on the right. Now, this decision also takes away from those 4.4 million registered Democrats in the state of Florida, and that is unfair. I think it's incredibly unfair to Democratic voters. Look, say what you want about the other candidates, right? And I haven't endorsed anyone on the Democratic side. But you should give everyone who wants to run an opportunity to make their case. And in the state of Florida, the Democratic Party is saying, no, no, we are gonna decide on behalf of those 4.4 million Democratic voters.
Now, with that said, the three other Democratic candidates have blasted the Florida Democrats in the state of Florida for doing this. I want to go to the next video where you're gonna hear from Marianne Williamson. By the way, they're planning on filing lawsuits in response to what is transpiring in Florida. Let's watch. I think that the Florida statute itself is unconstitutional, giving that kind of power to the party. The party itself is a political committee, it's not a government agency, but it's it's playing a quasi governmental function here. And it has no right to block democracy this way. It has a responsibility to the public good. And we all know that we're living at a time when our, our democracy itself is in crisis. We all know that the threats to democracy uh, of them that are represented by people such as Donald Trump. But the irony here, of course, is that the Democratic Party claims to be trying to protect democracy, but their way of doing it is to suppress democracy. It's wrong and it's also uh, undercutting of the most basic rights. If we cannot, if we cannot um, assume that the people of the United States have fair and equal access to knowing even who their candidates are, then we don't have fair and equal access to the vote. And this is why this is a transgression of the 14th Amendment. And this is what we will be claiming in court if we have to. She's absolutely right about that. And I really do hope that they pursue legal action against Florida's Democratic Party for doing what they're doing. Because this goes beyond who your preferred candidate is. This really is about protecting voters right to voice who they prefer. Even if it's a long shot, even if their preferred candidate has no shot. It is ridiculous for the mainstream Democratic Party to make that decision on the voters behalf. That is the antithesis of democracy. And finally, as Politico reports, go to graphic six, Florida Democrats are in violation of the National Party's rules that require delegates to the Democratic National Convention be allocated in a fashion that fairly reflects the expressed presidential preference or uncommitted status of the primary voters. Or if there is no binding primary, the convention and or caucus participants. Now, Nikki Fried, who's the chair of the Florida Democratic Party, disregarded concerns about them engaging in undemocratic maneuvering here. In fact, she viciously went after Dean Phillips and argued that he is engaging in conspiratorial thinking. Here's her exact quote. We are dismayed by Dean Phillips's conspiratorial and inappropriate comments comparing the state of Florida to the Iranian regime as part of his knee jerk reaction to long established procedures. This is unbecoming of someone running for higher office. Now look, They might not like some of the hyperbolic language that Dean Phillips engaged in in order to talk about the very clear undemocratic moves that the Florida Democratic Party is engaging in. But to try to pivot and deflect by calling the candidate that they're screwing over unbecoming, his behavior is unbecoming, no, no, no. Let's be absolutely clear here. I've got no love for Dean Phillips. He's a standard corporate Democrat, to be quite frank with you. But he's not in the wrong here. The Florida Democratic Party is in the wrong here. And while what I'm about to say is pure speculation, I have no evidence of it. I would bet my bottom dollar that the Biden camp is involved in this. That they don't want a robust primary. They don't want any challengers and they're making it abundantly clear that they're going to squash the possibility of anyone being able to fairly engage in this primary process. And I think that's gross. I think it's incredibly gross because here's the thing, if I were Joe Biden, especially if I have that comfortable lead, I would make it known to the American people, right? That I find it abhorrent that the state Democratic Party in Florida is not giving the other candidates a fair shot. I'd be embarrassed to be honest with you. I'd be embarrassed because I wouldn't wanna make it appear as though I'm such a such an insecure loser that I need my minions in the state of Florida to squash the possibility of other candidates being treated fairly in this process. But he's not really speaking out about that, right? He's not speaking out about it at all. So it tells me something about the Biden camp. It tells me something about the Democratic Party and it's not just about this election. We've seen them engage in shady behavior in other primaries and previous election cycles and again, If the only thing Democrats are gonna run on in 2024 is, well, please vote for us because democracy is on the line. They really have no leg to stand on if they're gonna pull crap like this. 
Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us. Become a young Turk.